Every month, we pick one lucky commenter and subscriber from all of our unboxings, and they win a £100 on Tabletop gift card. And remember to click that little bell, because that really helps us out. Hi everybody, I'm Justin from On Tabletop. I'm joined by Jerry, and today we're having a look at Cruel Seas from Warlord Games. Mm -hmm. Jerry, what do you think? Interesting times ahead. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's an aspect of warfare that I don't know a huge amount about and would normally not really pay much attention to. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that uh, there's an awful lot of combat games out there for air combat, mm -hmm. uh, but actually coming to do sort of coastal defence runs and that sort of thing with Cruel Seas just adds that third branch of the military. Mm -hmm. That means you can start to tie games together, so you start to combo and go, right, well, I'll do maybe a campaign and I'll have my ship naval combat game and then I'll have my land-based game mm -hmm. and I'll have my air. And yeah. So you can just start to actually tie things together this way. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting interesting uh, development. Yeah. Uh, well, for myself, the one thing I'm hoping to see in this, I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but anytime I've went from like first-person shooter or aircraft or vehicles to naval in mm. video games, I've always noticed that naval warfare, it, it feels a little slower. You have more time to breathe, more time to think. There's less of this, boom, headshot, you're dead. It's more, no, let's, let's get the lead, get the angles right, and drop fire on them. I don't know if you're going to see a huge amount of that, mm. because you're not going to be dealing with the massive warships. Mm. Because even at this... Well, yeah, they'd be this, huge. This 300 scale, you'd be lucky to fit some of them on a table. <laughs> um, so these are actually smaller patrol boats. Mm -hmm. uh, so they might be a bit nippier, um, but you do still have that same sort of thing. Some of them have torpedoes, for example. Mm -hmm. So having to gauge, depending on how the rail system pans out, yeah. having to gauge where they're going to go mm -hmm. because the torpedo is not going to be an instant hit. It yeah. goes out and will keep going. And making sure one of your own ships don't accidentally run into it later on is probably <laughs> very wise also. Yeah, I've, I've had that a couple of times when I've been playing things like World of Battleships where I'll drop torpedoes. They'll roll out, it looks like it's good, it looks like it's going right at my target, and then one of my teammates just scoots right in front of it, and it's just like, no! Well, Team you know, kill! Them's the brakes. Yeah. All right, well, let's start getting a look at what's yeah. in the box. We've already built a couple of sprues worth of the ships, just so everybody knows you are getting a lot of stuff in here. Right, so the art cover is gorgeous. You actually get that real nice sense of very close quarter ship fighting. And then in the box, what we get is... So you get three of these sprues, which are your teeny weeny tiny little ships. Is that the correct term for them? It's the term I'm using. Okay. So on these, you've got torpedo tubes, you've got gun mantlets, you've got your main hulls. This looks like it might be for anti-aircraft. I don't know much about ship combat myself, but they actually have even sculpted in like a little, is that a lifeboat there? Yeah, it'll be a little dinghy. Yeah, it's very, very nice. The, the details are really, really good on these for, for the actual scale of them. You can actually get a nice paint job on these if you want. So in the box, you actually get three of these. And whenever they're built, they look like so. So you've got your gun emplacements on the front. You've got anti-aircraft on the back here. You've got your torpedo tubes. And I'm guessing it could be very interesting, depending on how they've done the rules for the torpedoes, to see, do I launch? And if I have a friend here, can they seal into it? I will find that one out shortly, I yep. imagine. Uh, so then you get two of these sprues, which are some of your, your bigger ships. Yep. Again, we've got torpedoes on here. We've got, I think that's like a conning tower, small one, for the actual bridge of the ship. You've got anti-aircraft guns, you've got main guns, and then you've got the main hulls themselves. And it looks like in here is where the torpedoes will launch from, which is quite a nice touch. I have to wonder how much research has to go into actually getting something like this accurate and to scale. Because I'm sure the type of person who's playing this is going to want pure accuracy. I, I imagine there's an awful lot of ship schematic mm. books out there. So, you know, it's, it's like anything. If, mm. if you're going to do historical gaming, you want to do it as accurately as possible. So. Yeah. I don't know. You get some historical gamers, they want to go Hollywood with it. Yeah, but, but that's the gamers, not yeah. the game designers. Fair point. Fair so. point. Uh, we get this sprue, which is a ton of torpedo tokens. So it looks like you're going to actually have these sitting out on the table and moving on their own before they actually hit something. I like. Mm. What else we got in the box here? We have dice. Okay, so we have a good mess of dice here. So you've got uh, some German, some Allied, some yellow ones, and a couple of D10. Uh, don't know the rule system yet, so I don't know exactly what they're for. We have uh, cards and mm -hmm. banners. Ah, well, I suppose you're you're running ships. Yeah. You're you're going to you need flags. flags. 
So let's open this up. So yeah, so we've got a really nice set of German flags here with the uh, old navy, the not navy stuff. Uh, and then we've got the, the more British ones. I don't see a Union Jack in here. That's probably because it's in the top corner of this. Ah, I see, I see, I see. And then, like you said, yes, so we have our cards and uh, yes, these have all of your stats, your weapons mm. and stuff on them. And there's measuring devices on the side here. So I wonder, do you use this to measure your movement or something? I'm very curious about this. And we've got them for all of them. So you've got your German ones, German ones, German ones, and then your British ones as well. I like games with stat cards because hmm. it, it means you're not flicking back and forth through books to well, get your stats. It's not just that. I think because you're playing across a large ship rather mm -hmm. than individual people, there's no removal until the ship goes away. So mm -hmm. potentially it's a good way of marking without ending up with a ton of tokens following yeah. your ship in the water. Yeah, that you keep look. all the tokens and stuff off to one side and on the stack card itself. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now one thing I forgot to do was show off the the bigger ships when oh, yes. they're actually put together, and they're quite lovely. So once they're off the sprue, you've got your gun emplacements, you've got your torpedoes, you've got spare torpedoes here, and you can actually see these would be ran forward to actually reload the torpedo tubes at the front. I quite like this a lot. And I can see you've got a couple of different variants that you can build from each of these. So you can see you've got a couple of different gun layouts there. Very nice. What else you got for me there? We also have tokens, uh -huh. which well. I think are more or less the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's quite thin card tokens used for these, mm. which is interesting. And then ah, you've got speed well. markers here. So slow speed, combat speed, full speed, and then you've got some arcs on the front of it here mm -hmm. as well. Not sure what the red ones are for here. Again, need to sit down and read the rules. They have that look that the center folds out so that you can move it up and down the little card ah, so you can so follow there are along. Markers for those, yeah. I see. We have uh, Big C Mat. Life on the Ocean Waves, mm -hmm. as we'll see the texture on that, if nothing else, because yeah. unfolding it seems to be huge. Yeah, it's... Oh yeah, this is this is big. Hmm. <laughs> so unfortunately we don't have the camera space to unfold at all. Uh, what else we got? More tokens? More tokens and islands and ah, coastal I like, things. I like that you get some terrain in this, yeah. because it means you're not having to start instantly sculpting hills and islands. Well, so you, you've got your... Um, ocean map and then you've got various bits of yeah interruptions let's put it like that there things yeah. to get in your way things to navigate around yeah uh, that was the word i was looking for all the tokens you've got here but i will say if you're using one of the neoprene mats and you want to actually put some islands on there hmm. if you've got old hills and stuff you can just pop those down oh, yeah. there pour a little sand around the edge no yep, problem looks ideal all right the last thing uh is the the main rule book yep which is going to have all the rules you're going to need to play and I like the fact that you've got some model ships set up, but also some lovely artwork in yeah. here as well. Some of the, because uh, I had a quick flick through it, mm -hmm. which I've had long enough to flick through it, There's some scenarios kicking around in there, and one that caught my eye uh, was San Nazaire, ah. which is one that myself and Warren talked about a couple of years ago, yes. about getting a, a game in, and it was about a set of motor torpedo boats mm -hmm protecting uh, a large British, uh, I think it was a British frigate, the Campbelltown, mm -hmm. that had actually been converted to look like a German ship ah. that was attempting to deploy commandos into San Nazaire Harbour so they could blow up the sub pens and stuff. So did that, it work? Uh, it did, actually. It's, it's, it's a fantastic read and well worth reading up on. Mm -hmm. But the fact that that scenario was in there mm -hmm. has encouraged myself and Warren to get deep in the cruel seas and dig out our plan for some sort of commando raid on San Nazaire. So, that could be interesting. Yeah, so being able to combo it with cruel seas so we, we can take that side and we don't have to worry about writing a rule system for the naval part now. We've yeah. just used that because that's what it's designed for. Yeah, and what would you, would you then switch to bolt action for your own land? Possibly? We're, we're thinking about something smaller. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, well, uh, give me the last sprue there, which is actually some damage trackers. Now, yep. you'll have seen these before but normally in red. So they've changed up the, the plastic color and I like that they went for a blue because once you put these down onto your uh, your gaming table, they're a little less intrusive, I just would, for the color. I, I would dry brush the top of them white ah. and then it would look like shell shots landing in the water and the foam coming up. I like the way you think. Mm, I like the way you think, Up here sir. for thinking, down there for dancing. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, uh, this is definitely one we'll have to get onto yeah. the table. Oh, definitely. Uh, anything else we missed? I don't think so. I think that's us. Uh, well, there's well, a little, yeah. little baggy of... Uh, yeah. 
Smoke. Smoke and, you know, fire damage. Smoke and fire. All right, everybody, I tell you what, have you been playing Cruel Seas yet? Have you been getting into this game? Is it a game you've been looking at getting into? Uh, we'll move on here. Hopefully, Jerry and Warren will get Sand and yeah. on for you at some point. We'll see you again soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.